Next, now that we know how to extract these w's, we I think are ready to address the question of how they link to the probabilities, and in particular whether or not we really need to have an alpha in here. And the way we are going to do this is to use our knowledge of how to construct the uh, w. So the question here is going to be the what is the normalization on the probabilities? And to answer this question, let's use our ability to calculate those w's. And now I can ask, okay, if I've got the w's and I want to add up all of my probabilities, I would add up the sum of the modulo squared of the w's, which is, of course, just w star times w. This then would equal the same thing as the sum on n. Now those w squareds, right, these w squareds, according to my formula here, should give me p over alpha. Right? I'm hoping alpha equals 1, but if I want to be very careful, I might have this 1 over alpha in, that gets involved. Right? But the beauty of this is, of course, I know that the sum of all of those probabilities, if I were to add them up, has to just give me 1. Right? So if I'm really lucky when I do the sum, I just get 1, and then I know I didn't need any crazy normalization constant. Or if you want to be more uh, mathematical about it, right, what we're going to find is that if the sum is 1 for some reason, then I know 1 over alpha is 1, and that just tells me that alpha is 1. So either way, this is what I'm really hoping to find. Does it, this, what is this thing, and is it equal to 1? So, now... The way we are going to evaluate this is to use a very powerful trick. And this trick actually came up once again when we were dealing with uh, momentum representation. You may remember that in the momentum representation, we had to make sure that our momentum wave functions would come out properly normalized. And there's a very powerful theorem that we used to address that type of a, a question. And that theorem, I'm just going to state the theorem, and then we will see how the theorem allows us to answer this question very quickly, and then we will go back and prove the theorem. And the powerful theorem is known as Parseval's theorem. And what Parseval's theorem uh, told us in the momentum case, but it's the same idea here, was that if I have two different wave functions, I can compute their Hermitian inner product in any representation I want, and I will always get exactly the same value. So let me make that a little bit concrete. So what I'm saying is that if I have two different wave functions, psi, and I will write them in their energy representation, so the size I will associate with the set of coefficients w's, and then my phi will be some other arbitrary quantum state, I will make that in a re representation using these v's, which will then uh, combine with some other, uh, I mean, some other representation v will be the energy representation for this other function phi. And then the claim is that if that's true, then, and this is something we have to prove, then if I, I can take this inner product of phi with psi, right, and I can do it either in the um, real representation, I mean in the position representation with phi of x and psi of x, or I can do it in the energy representation. Now the energy representation, remember, consists of just these coefficients, v, wn and vn, for these two different wave functions. So to form their Hermitian inner product, what I literally mean, let me tidy this up, what I literally mean by that Hermitian inner product is that it should be an inner product, right? Which means I take the uh, product of these two different coefficients. Phi was written first, so I, write the, I will write the V first. So I'll take Vn, just like any dot product, times Wn and sum over all n. So that looks like a dot product. That's how we take a product of two lists of numbers. But this is a Hermitian inner product. And so you always end up starring the first of the set of the, the first thing. In this case, it becomes a phi star in my integral. In this case, it becomes a V star in my sum. 
So that is the content of Parseval's theorem. If I apply it up here, what I want you to notice is this is saying I'm taking the overlap, right, or the Hermitian inner product in energy space of the state that's represented by these w's, namely psi. So I could compute this Hermitian inner product, but Parseval's theorem says that's the same as the inner product of the wave function represented by w's, which is of course psi, inner product now with the wave function represented again by the w's, which would be psi again, and this inner product for my quantum state is something I know very easily. That's integral over all x of psi squared, which is the total probability of finding the particle somewhere, will be 1. So if Parseval's theorem holds, which we will prove in a moment, then the sum of these weights actually is 1. And then I know that 1 equals 1 over alpha, which would then tell me, in fact, that alpha equals 1 but more importantly, that tells me that if I want the probability to measure any value for the energy, I can take that directly without any proportionality constant as just the modulo squared of the corresponding coefficients in the quantum superposition, a key result. Very good. So all we have left now then is to prove Parseval's theorem in this discrete representation.